Hey everybody, Mr. Mathlog here. This lesson is con uh, more on constructing geometric sequences. So here we're just, it's the same stuff. We're just using uh, subscripts instead of uh, f of 1 and f of 2. So, so this lesson shows us how to construct a geometric sequence uh, given a couple of terms in the sequence. So in the prior lesson we did f of 1 is our first term, f of 2 is our, our second term, and so on, f of 3 being our third term. Here we're going to use a subscript. So this is a sub 1 equals our first term, a sub 2 equals our second term, and a sub 3 equals our third term. So this is uh, typically how they write uh, geometric sequences and arithmetic sequences is with these subscripts right here. Okay, So it's the same thing, you guys. So a sub n would be our nth term of the sequence. And so our nth term for a geometric sequence is, is a sub n. This is our nth term. That's what this says. In my prior books, it used to have t sub n. I kind of liked that better because that meant nth term, but a sub n is nth term. Okay, it equals our first term. That's what a sub 1 is times r, and then r is raised to the n minus 1 power. And remember, we have to do the power first before we multiply by this number right here. Okay, so we'll have a few examples here. So here's a, uh, the first example. The shutter speed setting of a camera form a geometric sequence where a sub n is the shutter speed in seconds and n is the setting number. Okay, so um, basically here, uh, whatever that means right there, here's our information that we really need right here. So the fifth setting of the camera is, is 1 60th second, and the seventh setting of the camera is 1 15th of a second. So we're going to write an explicit rule, the a sub n rule, uh, using the subscript notation. Okay, so, all right, so they gave us the fifth term and the seventh term right there. Okay, so when we go from the fifth term to the seventh term, we go through the sixth term. Because remember, it goes here's a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, a sub 6, a sub 7. But they gave us the fifth and the seventh right here. So let's go ahead and put those numbers in their place right here. And we don't know what this is right here, but we do know as we go to the right, it goes times r times r. So to go from the fifth to the seventh, we multiply it by r twice. Well, r times r is r squared, and since r is righty divided by lefty, we get r squared equals the right number, which is 1 15th divided by the left number, okay? r squared equals righty divided by lefty, okay? And so we went times r times r, that gets us r squared right there. Okay, remember when we divide fractions, we invert the second one, so we're going to change it to times 60 over 1, and 15 goes into 15, and 15 goes into 64 times, so we get r squared equals 4, so r has to be 2, okay? So here's our general formula right there, okay? So a sub n, make this your friend, you guys. You're going to be writing this all through this uh, module here. So a sub n equals the first term times r to the n minus 1 power. So this is going to be 2 right there, okay? we got to figure out what's a sub 1. Now one thing you could do is do this. You can, well, since they're fractions, it wouldn't work very well, but you'd go divide by r, divide by r, divide by r, all the way to get back. And, you know, when you're dividing by 2, it's the same as multiplying by a half. So you could do that if you want. Um, uh, or you can do um, uh, what the book does here, and this is what I would suggest also is substitute in either a sub 5 or a sub 7 into this formula right here, and that'll get us uh, a sub 1 right there, because we know what r is right there. And then, so if we plugged in a sub 5, this would be 5 minus 1. If we plugged in a sub 7, this would be 7 minus 1, because this is n right here. This represents n, okay, whether it's 5 or 7, okay? So here, let's go ahead and substitute um, uh, a sub 5 in right there, okay? So a sub 5, without putting r in right there, um, uh, would be 5 minus 1. So that's going to be 4. And then since we know a sub 5 is uh, 1 60th, we'll substitute in 1 60th right there. And since we know 2 is r, we'll put in 2 right there. And then 5 minus 1 is 4. So we end up getting 1 60th equals uh, a sub 1 times 2 to the, should be 4th right there. And 2 to the 4th is 16. And so since we got a fraction over here, instead of dividing by 16, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 16th, okay? So the, the 16s and 1 16ths will cancel. I should have put a little dash through there. Let's do that right here. 
little dash goes right through that 16 and that 16 cancel right there okay so a sub 1 is uh, 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 1 over 960 so everything's ready to plug into our formula because it said write a rule so this 1 over 960 is going to go there this is 2 and then that's it right there you guys so there's our rule right there okay piece of cake alright let's try another one you guys alright so you tell a number of friends about an interesting math secret you saw on Mr. Math Blog each of those friends tell the same number of friends about it. This pattern continues and there are no repeats in uh, the people told. So the number of people who hear about this secret through uh, through you form what's called a geometric sequence. Okay, so we this is all just says we got a geometric sequence right here. So here we go. Um, there are 256 people on the fourth round. So this is A sub 4 equals 256. And there's 4,096 people at the sixth round. So this is A sub 6 equals 4,096. So we're going to write a rule for this, okay? All right, so now we're going to go times R times R. So here we go. Times R times R is R squared equals righty divided by lefty. Okay, and so 4,096 divided by 56 is equal to 16. So since R squared equals 16, R equals 4, okay? So there's our formula. And then we can substitute in either um, a sub 4 or a sub 6. I like smaller numbers, especially when we're dealing with um, uh, formulas and stuff. So I'm going to substitute in a sub 4. So right here, a sub 4, we're going to put 256 right there. We're looking for a sub 1 because our formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Well, we know what r is. r equals 4, so 4 is going to go right here. And then a sub 4, so this is going to be 4n right there. So let's just plug it in right there, okay? I'm talking too much here. All right, so there's a, it's substituted in right there, okay? So 4 to the 3rd is 64. And then when we divide both sides by, by 64, we get uh, a sub 1 is also 4. So our formula is that. Your book says that's okay. But actually, that simplifies, you guys. This is 4 to the 1st, and this is times 4 to the n minus 1. And when you do that, you just add those exponents. So this 4 to the 1st is 1. So here's the 1 plus n minus 1. And then this 1 and this 1 cancels. So it's 4 to the n. So, so that's our formula right there. So your book says use this one, and they circled that and said that's your answer. But I think this is a little bit more cleaner right there. a sub n is, is 4 to the n. Okay, so here's a series of questions, and we'll stop here, you guys. So suppose we're given uh, the terms, the third term and the sixth term of a geometric sequence. How could we find a common ratio? Well, we'd uh, uh, to get from the third to the sixth term, we'd have to multiply by r three times. And so r times r times r is r cubed. So r cubed would be righty divided by lefty. Okay, so then uh, since r cubed is equal to that number, whatever that number is, then we just take the cube root of that right there, okay? Let's see, the next question was, um, if we knew the second term of the uh, and the common ratio of a geometric sequence, can we write an explicit rule for the sequence? If so, explain, okay. Well, to get the first term, you just go backwards, and when you go to the left, you divide by r. So we can get uh, the first term, no problem, just dividing the second term by r. And then we can write the information uh, with the explicit rule right there. Okay. And the last one is, how can we write the explicit rule for a geometric sequence if we knew the recursive rule for the sequence? Well, the recursive rules always gives the first terms, and it gives the term before it. Remember, it was um, uh, f of 1 equals something, and then it said f of n equals f of n minus 1 times r. And then it said for something like n is greater than or equal to 2. So, so they give you everything. So if they give you the first term, then we just use that information and r. And then we can write the explicit rule. Okay, guys, if you are in my class, I would assign that. Take care, you guys.